I'm Tim Chisholm and I'm a photographer based in San Diego and I mostly shoot film. One thing that I always noticed was the memories I had of the photos. The photo, the color palette in it looked completely different than what my memory looked like and vice versa. And for some reason, my entire life, I was always fascinated with that. Back in 2009, 2010, I got this random follow from uh, this guy, Jamie, and he just DMs me and he's like, hey, uh, you shoot bands, I shoot bands. I'd love for you to check out my work. He instantly became one of my favorite photographers. And I spent time and time again trying to edit raw files to look like his photos, or at least the color palette, and I couldn't do it. And then finally, I was checking out an interview he did on a website, and he mentioned that he shot film. So I was like, oh shit, that's what it is. I just loved everything about it instantly, and was hooked, and slowly, as time went on, went more film, less digital. And now we're at where I'm at today, where it's almost all film, and sometimes the iPhone. <laughs> The set of quality I love about film is, with black and white, I love contrast, I love grain, and with color, I love softness and vibrance. Um, but one thing that I love the most about it is the grain, and not when you can see chunky grain or when you can't, but just the fact that a digital file, pixels are square, and on film, grain is circular. Film helps me achieve my vision as a photographer because it keeps me in the moment. One of the things I love shooting is my friend. Um, in 2011, my best friend passed away and I realized I didn't have any photos of her except for a couple like shitty iPhone photos. And ever since then, I've religiously shot photos of my friends. So when I'm shooting digital, like they'll be like, oh, can I see that photo? Or I'll be like, oh, I don't like it that much. Like, and like retake it. But if I'm shooting film, like I just pull the camera up shoot what I'm seeing and then it's back to hanging out with him and I'm back in the moment and I don't miss anything with my friends and I also get to document them and so that just helps me achieve what I want which is just photos of my friends that mean a lot that they feel good in and that I'm proud of. I already stated I like shooting my friends the most with film but a couple years ago I went back to my roots and started shooting bands again and when I did that, I brought along my film camera instead of a digital camera and fell in love all over again because you get the chaos of shooting a band and the uncertainty because you only have this small amount of time and all of that. But then you also add the uncertainty and chaos of just it's on film. So you don't know if the exposure is right. You don't know if uh, it's in focus. Yeah, if I could do a project where money wasn't an issue, I think I would want to tour with a couple different of my favorite bands like all in different genres and just document everything on 35 but then also like do stuff on large format do stuff on uh, instant do stuff on uh, medium format just kind of mess around do something weird like set up a four by five and on the side of a stage and just expose for the entire set and see what happens or you know run into the middle of the crowd with the 35 millimeter and just kind of like set up and shoot from there and because if you're on tour you can you have more room to move around you have more room to mess around and screw up something because you don't have just that one set you have every night of that tour to do it but I think it would be fun to do with going on tour with like a metal band and then going on tour with a punk band and then going on tour with a hip hop artist and then going on tour with uh, Carly Rae Jepsen because everyone in the film community knows how much I love her. So I can't pinpoint one favorite film, but I'll go with my top four and that would be Ektar 100 because I love the vibrant colors. Everyone says it's dog shit for portraits, but I love it because I think it gives true skin tones, unlike Portro, which is more washed out, which is more pleasant for people, but not necessarily what I like. Um, and then black and white, HP5 or T-Max 3200, those are the, the go-tos. 
And then I love Fuji Sensia, which is a slide film that's been discontinued. And I've only shot one roll of it. And the one roll I looked at it and I was like, this is the best film. And I'm sad it's gone. So my favorite camera, probably the Leica M3 double stroke. There's just something about the double stroke that makes it feel so natural. The fact that there's no light meter and you can just, you have to know what you're doing to shoot it and you can just run around and shoot. And it's so satisfying when you get a rollback and it's properly exposed and in focus and all of that. I always encourage friends to shoot film for multiple reasons. Usually it's when I'm talking to friends who are already photographers and they just want to know how to get better at something. Like I had a friend who takes gorgeous wedding photos, travels the country, does that. And she's like, how do you get your stuff to look the way you do? And I was like, oh, it's because I shoot film, but like it's because I'm in the moment and I'll come up, take the photo, put the camera down. And then I have other friends who like just got into photography and they're like, oh, like what can I do to get better? And I'm like, oh, take an intro to black and white class at your local community college because I learned more in that one semester than I did the six years leading up to it. And when you learn how to process your own film, when you learn how to do a darkroom print, um, even if that's not something you keep doing, those skills transfer to Lightroom because you're like, oh, this is a little bit underexposed, so I need to up the exposure. Um, I need to dodge this, I need to burn this. But you know exactly what those tools are doing. Like you just don't know the, you know more than just like, oh, this is the dodge tool. This is the burn tool. You know exactly like their purpose. And once you even get a mild understanding of that, you understand your photography so much better. The hardest part of film photography for me is shooting anything in 120. Just loading it on the reel is such a pain in the ass and I have such a big problem doing that, that it just, it's always the hardest part for me. Yeah, I think the future of film is endless at this point, because with the intro of digital and that being the mainstay and film taking a back burner, it's turned more to the side of fine art than of commercial. So I think, it, gives people a better idea of like what you're going to be doing with that product. So even though some film stocks are going away, the film stocks that are coming out are better than what they were before. And once someone decides to start making new cameras, I think that's when it's going to take off in a completely different direction because you have more, you can have a modern camera that shoots the aesthetic that you like and the process that you like. My name is Tim Chisholm and I shoot film.